in this video i'm going to discuss to you you what is all about your atelectasis so when we say atelectasis it refers to the closure or collapse of alveoli and often is described in relation to x-ray findings and clinical signs and symptoms atelectasis may be acute or chronic and we cover a broad range of pathophysiologic changes from microatelectasis, which is not detectable on check X-ray, to macroatelectasis with loss of segmental, low bar, or overall lung volume. The most commonly described atelectasis is acute atelectasis, which occurs frequently in the post-operative setting or in people who are immobilized and have a swallow monotonous breathing pattern. Excess secretions or mucus plugs may also cause obstruction of airflow and result in atelectasis in an area of the lung. Atelectasis also is observed in patients with a chronic airway obstructions that impedes or block airflow to one area of the lung. So in the hospital, uh, it is called as your lung collapse. So mas common siya na tinatawag na lung collapse. So, what will be the possible causes? So, the possible causes of your atelectasis is either your hypoventilations, your airway obstructions, and your compressions. So, with these three, it will lead to your collapsed lungs or your atelectatic lungs. See, primarily, basically, guys, ganito yung nangyayari kasi with the ventilations. So, the breathing patterns goes like this. The inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. So, yung air flows from the environments going into the lungs. So, the principle of your higher uh, concentrations to your lower concentrations. So, yung atmospheric pressure from the outside to your intrapulmonary pressure. So, with that one, mayayari kasi your uh, air moves in and out of the lung. So, mayayari, pagpasok ng air, going to your uh, going to your tear, to your main bronchus, to bronchioles, uh, tapos sa may alveoli, sa may alveoli natin. So, with that one, sa may alveoli kasi natin, so, dun sa may alveoli na ganyan, dun nangyayari ang ating gas exchange. Okay? Doon ang ating gas exchange. Then, kaso sa case natin ng ating atelectasis, mayroong tatlong possible cause. Yung compression, hypoventilation, and your uh, obstruction. So, first kasi, didiscuss ko muna, it's all about your obstructions. So, ang mayayari kasi, pag mag-obstruction, ganyan sabi ko, air will go, pasok, tapos... Then, uh, sa alveoli, then gas exchange, then okay, labas ulit, carbon dioxide, oxygen, labas ulit. So, ganun yung process, repetitive na ganun yung process na. Kaso, ang nangyari kasi sa ating uh, obstructive atelectasis, the cause is like this. So, mangyayari, sa site for example, dito yung sa may alveoli natin. Tapos, ang nangyayari kasi nagkaroon ng obstruction dito. So, yung process sa atin supposedly is that air pasok, tapos gas exchange, air pasok, gas exchange, air pasok, gas exchange. Kaso, on this part, ang nangyayari kasi, ay, uh, hindi, dahil nga po sa obstructions na meron dito, hindi makamove yung air going to your alveoli na dito. So, ang mangyayari, itong alveoli na to magiging airless siya. So, pag naging airless siya, supposedly ganito yung itsura niya. Dahil nga po, wala pong air na pumapasok, ang, mag, 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 ang magiging result nito, magiging airless na siya. So, magiging ganito na siya. So, ang tawag na natin dito, it is your atelectasis. So, ito na yung tinatawag nating atelectasis. Kasi nga, nag, uh, nag-collapse na yung lungs dahil nga walang pumupuntang Next naman na pwedeng mangyari with your atelectasis naman, compressions. Uh, one example of your compression is your fural effusions. So just like for example, et, andito yung, yung fural effusions. So ganun pa rin, air pasok, tapos gas exchange. Kaso, dahil nga nagkaroon tayo ng problema dito, mayroon tayong fural effusion dito, eto i-compress niya tong lungs. So tong lungs na to, supposedly na ganito siya, ang mangyayari dahil nga po, 
meron siyang uh, floral effusion na ganyan. Ang mangyayari is liliit na siya dyan. Okay? So, ang mangyayari, yung alveoli natin na ganito dapat ang mangyayari dahil na-compress siya, so maiipit siya. Tama. So, pag naipit na siya, pagpasok ng air, papasok yung air, pagpasok ng air, punta dito, supposedly na mag expand ito dahil nga po doon sa underlying cause nating floral effusions na compress ito. So, ibig sabihin yung part na to hindi siya nagkaroon ng enough air. So, possible on this part is that magkakaroon din siya ng lung collapse. So, most probably, obstructions and your compressions, yun yung pwedeng, uh, ma- ma- palaging naging cause ng ating atelectasis. So, what will be the signs and symptoms of our uh, atelectasis? Okay. So, sabi niya dito, the development of atelectasis usually is insidious. Signs and symptoms includes cough, sputum productions, and low-grade fever. Fever is universally cited as a clinical sign of astelectasis, but there are few data to support this. Most likely, the fever that accompanies atelectasis is due to infection or inflammation distal to the obstructive airway. Diba gaya ng sabi nyo kanina, pwede na yung mga underlying cause just like your fluoride effusions might cause your atelectasis. That's why it was associated with your fever. Another signs and symptoms is that the client may also have your tachycardia, tachypnea, pleural pain, and your central cyanosis. So, why, uh, what might be the possible complications in regard to atelectasis? So, remember this one. So, gaya ng sabi ko nga, uh, going back with the gas exchange. So, sa gas exchange kasi pagpasok, lungs, lungs. Tapos, merong membrane na ganyan. Tapos, uh, oxygen, carbon dioxide, ganyan. So, with the process kasi, especially with your blood, kasi may blood na nagtatravel dito, from your pulmonary artery, going to your lungs for oxygenations, then lungs oxygenations to your pulmonary ventilations, then go to your circula- so, to, to your uh, systemic circulations. Kaso, dahil nga po nagkaroon tayo ng atelectasis, would you think ba enough ba yung oxygen na magtatravel sa ating systemic circulations? No. Kasi nga, nagkaroon ng collapses ng at collapse ng ating alveoli. So, with that, pag nagkaroon ng uh, inadequate perfusions ng uh, oxygen sa ating circulations, it might lead to your hypoxia. So, one complications, might complications of your uh, atelectasis, it's your hypoxia. So, what will be our diagnostic procedures? So, the diagnostic procedures, number one is your chest x-ray. On your chest x-ray kasi, makikita nyo yung part na to. Ganyan sabi ko nga, we have two lungs. Kaso nga lang ito, pure na nawala. Puting-puti na siya. Okay? So, puting-puti na siya, ibig sabihin, nawala, na, uh, nawala yung lungs natin or na-impede dahil nga po, nag-collapse yung ating alveoli. So, ibig sabihin, wala na siyang air. So, ibig sabihin, collapse na lahat to. Okay, nag-collapse na siya lahat to. Gaya ng sabi ko, kung paano kung malalaman na atelectasis siya or your pleural effusion. Usually kasi for pleural effusion, yung magistan nito is that uh, nagkaroon siya ng uh, deviations dito. Okay, deviations dito. While sa atelectasis naman, ang mangyayari, magkaroon siya ng deviations dito. Okay. So, magkabaliktad siya. So, may, may, makikita mo siya with the uh, migis, uh, tawag dito. Yung sa trick niya, niya, kung nag-deviate siya to the unaffected side, it's more on to your uh, fluoride effusion. Pero kapag deviated siya to your uh, affected side, it's more on your atelectasis. Ano pa yung pwede nating makita sa ating x-ray? You can also notice sa x-ray a patchy el- infiltrates or your consolidated na lungs. So, in patch infiltrates and consolidations ang pwede mong makita doon sa chest x-ray ng client mo. Another 
uh, to note for the degree of hypoxemia, you might use your false oximeter to check for your saturation of your hemoglobin. Okay, usually uh, with a client with atelectasis, less than 90% or lower pa yung makikita mo na oxygen saturations ng client. So now, uh, let's proceed naman. What will be the possible preventions of your atelectasis? Number one, change position frequently, especially from supine to upright position to promote ventilation and prevent secretion from accumulating. Number two, encourage early mobilization from bed to chair followed by early ambulation. Number three, encourage appropriate deep breathing exercise and coughing to mobilize secretion and prevent them from accumulating. Next, teach or reinforce appropriate technique for incentive spirometer. I think uh, sa treatment modalities natin madidiscuss to. Next, it's your administer prescribed opioids, opioids and sedatives judiciously to prevent respiratory depressions. Because there are some medications that causes your uh, resp respiratory depressions just like your morphine. Another is your perform postural drainage and chest percussion if indicated. Another is your institute suctioning to remove tracheobronchial secretions if indicated. Uh, especially for yung mga uh, long-term immobilized clients, ganyan, yung mga meron siyang retained secretions. So you need to uh, perform your uh, era, uh, oral or your nasopharyngeal suctioning. Next, what will be our nursing management? So primarily, our nursing management, number one, improving airway patency by means of encouraging hydration. Another is that provide humidified air. Another is your encourage patient to cough effectively. And it's what I've said, if you will gonna perform suctioning if indicated. Number two is that you will going to promote fluid intake and maintain nutrition. So, most probably, encourage your fluid approximately 2 liters per day lang naman siya. Another intervention is that promoting activity tolerance, just like your changing of your positions frequently. Especially for those clients with your retained secretions para ma-mobilize siya. And pwede mo rin damang uh, perform ang yung tissue therapy so that ma-mobilize mo yung secretions ng client mo so that uh, you will gonna prevent the occurrence of obstruction. And lastly, you will gonna monitor and prevent complications. As what I've said, uh, one of the complications, it's your hypoxia. Uh, so you will gonna monitor, uh, basically, we're gonna monitor for the vital signs, especially for your RR, for your heart rate, and for your blood pressure. Remember our triads on your shocks, it's your hypotension, tachycardia, and your Takip niya. Okay. Next is that uh, we need also to initiate initiate preventive measures for atelectasis. Yun yung binasa ko. So, by means of that, you are going to prevent the occurrence of your atelectasis. Okay. So, that's the basic components of your uh, discussion of the uh, atelectasis.